I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. They're now trying to say, hey, we've got a really clever idea for the cost of living crisis. Right. Eat cereal for dinner. But for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail her. Yeah, we're supposed to have was moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And apparently I'm Jeremy Carl, though it says Alex. So we're with you for the next half an hour to chat through all the stories that, frankly, might have caught your eye this morning. You are, of course, on Talk TV. Uh, TV on radio, that's important, online, on your smart speaker. Uh, well, thank you very much for Pleasure. joining me this What's morning, Jeremy. What's wrong with her today? Uh, <laughs> there's something wrong with the M4. Oh, right. Yeah, uh, okay. So she can't get her car around it. Uh, so uh, uh, really pleased to have you on board because we've got a very, very busy 30 minutes ahead, throttling through the headlines and, of course, still dominating the news agenda. Hardly surprising uh, is poor Princess Kate. Uh, I was here at Talk TV when the story broke. I mean, we knew all about it about 5 o'clock. It broke to the public at 6 o'clock. Uh, and uh, a lot of people feeling very bad about themselves because they got involved in all these conspiracy theories. Uh, I mean, I was calling, Jeremy. I was saying, for God's sake, address the nation. What is the matter with you? I feel a bit bad now because I now realise that she wanted to do that right from the start because it made sense, but she didn't want to do it until the end of the school term because uh, of her yeah. kids and how they would have So her kids go to the same school as my kids went to for years. Mm -hmm. um, I will say this, having lived in Windsor. All of this started, right? I think the photo was a good idea in planning, the way it panned theory, out. Yep. It started all that, right? Let's just nail this, shall we? This is a 30-something-year-old woman with three kids who's been diagnosed with cancer and is <laughs> having preemptive chemotherapy, which mm -hmm. I myself have had. Yeah, all those... Just, listen, there were people questioning the Photoshop. That's different. All those... Just, what's that Owen bloke called? Owen Jones. People like him, right? This, this is genuinely true. Crawl back under your ridiculous little stone, you has been. People like that are still... People are still doing messages like, oh, AI says it's... Yeah, this. that's right. Lee, let me tell you, we talk about equality and we talk about diversity. You are bullying a woman now, you sad bunch of muppets. Leave her alone. She's a mother and her kids have had to deal with this. They've gone to Norfolk and the Hall. Leave them alone. But still, those dreadful keyboard warriors keep their rubbish going, and it's not right. Uh, I absolutely agree, and uh, the chronology of all this now makes perfect sense. Yeah. We all go, why didn't William go to his godfather, King Constantine's Because memorial? that was the day that he the found out his he wife had literally cancer. just found out that... So, 28 minutes to go, he pulled out. We now completely understand why. Why didn't they make a statement earlier? Because she's worried the kids are still at school. How would they handle it? Everything now has fallen into place, so please, 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 no more of this conspiracy theory... AI nonsense. So we've got the story. I called for a little bit more transparency, and my God, has Kate given us transparency? Now, even I say, leave her alone. She's got to recover. Completely. Uh, agree with you. Uh, now, uh, meanwhile, uh, this horrible saga does, uh, this is, there's no pleasure in this, but it does reveal just how bad the split between William and Harry is because Harry and Meghan, to their credit, they put out a nice statement saying, be happy, be healthy, recover, uh, and apparently reached out to William and Kate privately as well from over in Montecito. Uh, I don't think they got a particularly happy reception. Uh, and uh, William has let it be known that when Harry is due to come here at the beginning of May, May the 4th, I think it is, he does not want to see him. You might, uh, you and your producer might hate me for what I'm about to say, but I refuse to talk about this on breakfast this morning because I'm not in interested about whatever has or hasn't happened. That has happened. This is about a woman of 42 with three kids. I'm not bothered whether Prince Harry's leached out, le reached out and whether it's worked or not. I'm so, I, don't, I don't even think we get any credence in making it about that. Their relationship is fractured. That's happened. That will or will not work in the yeah. long run. This is about a woman. Leave her alone. Don't people jump on the bandwagon. Just let her get that. Sorry, that's just, I genuinely fair feel enough, that. Fair enough. It's a fair I'm point. Let, let's... Harry and Meghan, leave them out of it. I'm not interested. Yeah, that's exactly it. Healthy, uh, that I want to be... I'm not... No way. You can't just go, oh, I'm sorry, I'm... 
just we don't even know what the truth is, right? Yeah. Is what I'm saying. Just uh, let this woman breathe. And the reason that uh, William does not want uh, Harry and Meghan anywhere near them in their hour of need is, and I quote, and this is from Royal Insiders, but it uh, looks pretty kosher to me. It says, because they can't be trusted. That's what they've done in the past. They get together with the, I get king, that. the family I get that. and then they spill the beans. So this is not a moment where we need the beans to be spilled. Uh, so uh, much, much The truth more... is none of us know the truth. We do now, leave her alone. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, as we're also hearing, William and Kate have put the Harry problem to the back of their minds. They've got far, you're right, Jeremy, they've got far more important things to worry about than whether or not they're mates can, with Harry. Can I talk about the social media thing? You'll have woken yeah, up yeah. this morning, my friends, to newspaper stories, certainly in the Commons today. 49 MPs are going to be told that they've been targeted cyber-wise by, by China. Uh, on the same day, we're going to find out 40 million of us could have had our electoral details yeah. stolen in the last years. I'm going to bring this to something that everybody went, whoa, China and Russia, TikTok, owned by the Chinese, could have also been instrumental in pushing all these negative comments about the Princess of Wales around the globe. It's a very, very interesting point, this. Yeah, it really is. It could be trolls from China and Russia bombarding us with disinformation to destabilise this country. Uh, and uh, but just to remind us, Jeremy, uh, this was Friday night, 6 p.m., when Kate suddenly unleashed uh, her statement, her filmed statement. And though I say so myself, it was an, she wrote it herself. It was amazing. She timed it herself. This is an exercise in extreme dignity uh, under difficult circumstances. Please Let's then. remind ourselves of uh, Kate, the Princess of Wales, addressing the nation on Friday night. I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you personally for all the wonderful messages of support and for your understanding whilst I've been recovering from surgery. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family, but I've had a fantastic medical team who have taken great care of me, for which I'm so grateful. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This, of course, came as a huge shock, and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. As you can imagine, this has taken time it has taken me time to recover from major surgery in order to start my treatment. But most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be okay. As I've said to them, I am well and getting stronger every day by focusing on the things that will help me heal in my mind, body and spirits. Having William by my side is a great source of comfort and reassurance too as is the love, support and kindness that has been shown by so many of you. It means so much to us both. We hope that you'll understand that as a family, we now need some time, space and privacy while I complete my treatment. My work has always brought me a deep sense of joy and I look forward to being back when I'm able. But for now, I must focus on making a full recovery. At this time, I'm also thinking of all those whose lives have been affected by cancer. For everyone facing this disease, in whatever form, please do not lose faith or hope. You are not alone. I didn't, know whether, I didn't know whether to say this this morning on breakfast, but I did, and I just said it to Kev privately. I had uh, cancer 12 years ago, testicular cancer. And um, I just want to say about her message, preemptive, I can not say the word, chemotherapy is... is Cancer's bad, but but there is, a, you heard it in a message, it's quite hopeful because what happens with cancer if it spreads and it goes through the lymph nodes, then you're in trouble. Preemptive chemotherapy implies that it hasn't got through the lymph nodes and what they're going to do is, with the greatest mm. respect, zap that before it spreads. That's the reality. So I actually think it's a, uh, I mean, I had it for four months. Uh, it drains the hell out of you. Um, but for her, what a brave woman. And watching that again, 
she had to do that. And, and, and I just think, I've said it many times, Kev, I think she is the future of the monarchy. I think it's the first time that anybody's been able to marry into the monarchy from outside. I think yep. she's one of them. I think she's brilliant, and I wish her the best of luck. Yeah, I mean, and she doesn't look well there. That's no. because she's already undergoing chemotherapy. Anybody can tell you who's underwent. Terrible. Uh, it's uh, Well, you can... Doctor tell. said to it's... me one day, how are you feeling? I said, rubbish. She said, that's because I'm poisoning you. That's a fact. Yeah, well, there you are. So that's why she doesn't look too well. But I think if you unravel that message to her, if you dissect exactly what she's saying, uh, she's going to be OK. And for you trolls, <coughs> harm is going to get you, yeah. seriously. And by the way, people say, she wrote that all on her own. Well, of course she did. She's an intelligent woman. She's got, with people? she's got a degree from St Andrews University, one of our best universities. Of course she can write it herself. She timed all this to perfection. So yes, she did. Uh, we, uh, we, a lot of us owe her a bit of an apology, I'd say, to say the least, uh, because this conspiracy theory stuff was hard to resist. A lot of people now going on to... Uh, there were people that were concerned, Kim. Well, I, I'm not defending you, I'm defending Nick. What I'm saying... Well, I am defending you. People question that Photoshop. I get that. Yeah. Beyond that, the people who are now saying it's AI, she wore that jumper 11 years ago, seriously do one, because karma will get you, because you deserve to be yeah. got, in my humble opinion. Well, I think she's coming back, and uh, all the best to Kate and her family Absolutely. right now, of course. Uh, meanwhile, uh, still with the royal family's health battles, of course, uh, we almost forget in all of this that the king is suffering from cancer too. Uh, really heartwarming stories at the weekend about when they were both in the London Love clinic it. together. He both toddled down yeah, to see he her. He was like, tod like a naughty schoolboy in his uh, dressing gown. And I, and I gown. said this morning, you can imagine him in his regal dressing gown, but what if he just had one of those gowns on yeah. that's open at the back and the king's batoons yeah. was on view for but I think I think one thing, there's a picture in the mail today. Yeah. We haven't got it. I don't know if you can put it up. There's a wonderful picture of, of, of King Charles and Kate. And I think she is the daughter he's never had. And yeah, I think their relationship absolutely. is massively, massively it's close. It's become very, very close because of their joint health battles. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Princess Anne's son, uh, Peter Phillips, uh, he's away on a sort of trip to Australia. Now, he told Sky News... Uh, that the king's in good spirits. He said, I think ultimately he's hugely frustrated. Yeah, it will be. He's frustrated that he can't go on. Uh, actually, I think we've got uh, Peter Phillips talking, so let's uh, let Peter do his own talking. Take it away, Peter Phillips. He's in good spirits. I think uh, ultimately he's hugely frustrated. Um, he's, a, he's frustrated that he can't, can't get on and do everything that he wants to, wants to be able to do. Um, but he is, he's, he's very pragmatic. He, he understands that there's a, there's a period of time that he really needs to um, focus on himself. But at the, at the same time, he is, he is always pushing um, his staff and, and everybody and his doctors and nurses to be able to say, actually, can I, you know, can I do this, can I do that? So well, that's a good sign. It's a good sign that he's frustrated. He wants to get better still. Mm. He's talking now about going to Royal Ascot and various events in the summer. I'll see him there, then. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you will, won't Turn you? Turn up, Charlie. So he, 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 the king is chomping at the bit to get back to June. You don't realise where that's funny, what you've just said, I know, do you? I do know. Why? Because Why? it's a horse racing. Now, what's the mouth bit of a horse? A bit. There it? you go. Yeah, well, so don't see? I know this what isn't thrown at. together. This yeah, is planned. Yeah. We, we worked on this all night. We did. Don't uh, say that sounds wrong. I was going to come early, but the traffic was bad. Well, listen, here's another massive story yeah. that broke on Friday night. Actually, while I was on air endeavouring to talk about poor Kate, because she just made her statement, literally at that moment it emerged that there was this terrorist horror unfolding near Moscow, uh, where I think something like 143 people were eventually killed by the... 137 people were killed by these uh, gun-toting terrorists who uh, were told, uh, they say that they're from Islamic State, because they hold Russia as their er enemies because they don't like what Russia did in Syria, Afghanistan... To the Muslims. Uh, to the Muslims, and in Chechnya, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but meanwhile, uh, this is what's worrying, and what a terrible event this was. Absolutely worrying. appalling. Uh, but meanwhile, uh, Putin is trying to say it's the Ukrainians, and, of course, we fear that that will be a prelude to a massive attack on well, Ukraine. Well, it's really interesting, because, and, and I'm not a conspiracy <coughs> theorist at all, and I get very angry with people, but the first first thing I heard was, and I heard this, I thought, false flag. This is Putin yeah. doing it so he can further indoctrinate the Russian people and blame Ukraine. Turns out, by the way, my friends, that the CIA and services in the United Kingdom and across Europe warned Russia and they That's did nothing amazing. about it. Now, of course, he comes straight out and he says, these people came in from Ukraine. Yeah. So the rhetoric from him absolutely suits this. There's no, you know, I got shot down by Chip Chapman this morning. He said, no, Jess, seriously, this is ISIS for the Muslim situation. But this plays 
into Putin's yeah, hands yeah. and reiterates what I keep saying when people say, why, why, why do we need to support Ukraine? I'll tell you why we need to support Ukraine, because when he's done Ukraine and puts one foot outside Ukraine, Article whatever of NATO says we are then at war. That is why we have to keep giving weapons to Ukraine. Absolutely. That is absolutely. Uh, and he, you know, he, he uh, plus that man's a megalomaniac. It, 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 it's not. I don't. It cannot be a false flag operation because having 143, 137 people killed on his watch in Moscow by gun-toting terrorists yeah. is not a good look. No, I agree so with that. So he would not stage that to look so bad. He might stage it for four or five He's minutes, using it, though, Kev, not, isn't he? He's oh, using, he's using it. He's using yeah, it. Yeah, he, he's being pragmatic about it. Which is why I'm implying that maybe he didn't yeah. listen to the security advice, because well, he could I, use I it. I remember the damn story. He got into the newspapers. It was literally in the papers. Britain and Russia, Western intelligence services have warned Putin uh, that there could be a serious terrorist attack in Moscow before too long. Guess what? He ignored it. Guess what happened? Uh, but the worry is how he treats that now. Uh, there are serious fears, and I reckon uh, they're well-grounded, that uh, Putin will use this as an excuse uh, to lay waste to Kiev, to launch a, a hideous retaliatory attack. So watch this space. I hope it doesn't happen, but we've got to be very careful here. Didn't get a chance to talk about this last week. I'll let you start. Take a breath. Go on. Well, it's uh, Home Secretary uh, James Cleverley has told fans... England fans to vote with their feet and not buy the England shirt with Nike's playful reimagining of the St George's Cross flag on the back of the uh, England strip collars. Uh, now, uh, was it a significant? Was it a coincidence that when we go out against Brazil, we lose our first game for ten games? I'm not interested in that. I'm just going to say one thing. Why is it that the United Kingdom, I should say England? is not allowed to fly, is not allowed to be proud of, is not allowed to demonstrate the cross of St George. Can you imagine, my friends, what would happen if any other nation was... Well, it's ridiculous. It's got to a point in this country where anybody who flies that flag is ostracised. That's the flag of England. Why? It, honestly, and the FA should be ashamed of themselves for allowing it to take place. Yeah, and, they, and they've doubled down on it. They won't change they've it. Uh, There's a big campaign, change it, change it, change it. You know the people who disagree with me go, well, it's only a shirt. Can you imagine if you did that to the Scots? I think, actually, Emily Thornbury has never made more sense in her life. See, she said, can you imagine if the Welsh dragon was replaced by a pussycat? It's yeah. true. Well, you know, you go nuts. mind you, Emily's track record with the uh, it was about the George's best thing. She, I know, maybe it was the best great. thing she'd ever said. To be yeah, fair, but she 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 thinks that people who fly the flags outside their home are maybe reprehensible. She, she looks down on them. Uh, that's why Ed Miliband went furious with her when she mocked someone for hanging the St George's flag Ironic outside she said their them, flag. Pal, to be fair, yeah. Right? Well, you know, politicians changing tune. Who yeah, ever heard of that? that? Meanwhile, but one politician I'm going to back to the hilt on this one is the Home Secretary, James Cleverly, who said about this shirt, if it's not a red cross on a white background, it's not the England shirt. Good it's you, not James the England Cleverly. flag. Absolutely right. I'm sure he's Making says, a push to be the next leader of the Tory party. By the way, 125 <laughs> quid they went for this, that. that and that's another thing, not trying to sound like I agree with Starmer. Cleverly there, you see, probably being clever and trying to make a pitch uh, to be the next leader. That well, uh, that's a, uh, it's a popular line to take. And why the uh, FA won't change this uh, stupid shirt, this stupid flag, uh, a playful reimagining. You know what? It's Nike, American company. You want to playfully reimagine our flags? Why don't you have the guts to playfully reimagine your own flag, the Stars and Stripes? I know, because you're scared. You're scared to upset the Americans, but you think we don't matter. Well, our traditions matter, and we're not having it. You can stick your shirt where the sun don't shine. That is a party <laughs> political broadcast on behalf of me. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, uh, now, uh, talking of uh, foreign uh, yeah, I brought this people up to worry earlier. about. Uh, now, uh, two, two stories here. Uh, MPs, a series of uh, top MPs, people like Ian... Uh, uh, Ian Duncan Smith. Ian Duncan Smith. A few others. That's about the only one I've heard of. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, are to be warned by the government to expect a fresh wave of cyber attacks from China to destabilise Western democracy, as in ours. And today, 
the UK, this is big actually, will, Very big. If, will officially blame China for the 2021 cyber attack which hacked the personal details of 40 million Brits. And can I tell you that in the next election, if statistics are right, that will be the number of people who vote in the next election. Now, you might be out there going, well, it's just my electoral details, but this could be the tip of the iceberg. And I was saying to Tobias Elwood this morning, you know, a lot of people will go, oh, stop warmongering. You've got all about this access of China and Russia and Iran. It's a very real threat, ladies and gentlemen, an absolute real threat. Um, for example, here's something I didn't know about this morning. Mm -hmm. TikTok, you can't have it if you're a minister, you can have it if you're an MP. TikTok is Chinese, and they are very concerned, as I said earlier, that it might have yeah. had an impact on, on disinformation from Kate. But it's this harvesting of data mm. from, from all of us. Yeah. And it is certainly, certainly, whether it's Alexa or whatever, the, the finger is being pointed at the Chinese, and I think the government needs to wake up. Pal. Yeah, they are, but both China and Russia are bombarding us with they are. cyber warfare on a 24 7 basis. Uh, as I say, uh, Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden will today warn the likes of Sir Ian Duncan Smith, Tim Loughton, SNP leader Stuart MacDonald, uh, and, so, and uh, many others that uh, they are particularly in the firing line for this uh, cyber, these cyber attacks that are specifically aimed to destabilize our democracy. That is going on 24-7, 24-7. Uh, meanwhile, uh, <laughs> the Just Stop Oil campaigners consider, uh, continue apace, you know, marching down roads, ruining everyone's day. And now, at last, at last, one of them, one of these eco-nuts has noticed there's a problem with uh, Just Stop Oil. What we've been noticing all along, where are the people of colour? Where are the working class people? Oh no, they're all white middle class people and now one of their own has noticed this. What about the fact they talk a load of old rubbish and get in the way of ambulances and people trying to go to work? Yeah. Uh, well, exactly. So Olive, uh, who's Olive? Been, uh, yeah, not a very uh, young name, but she's believed to be in her. She's 20s. about twelve. Is she, she says there's a problem. I don't know if we've got have we got Olive talking or uh, Olive just... sporting pink hair told them they were living in a student bubble and had to attract more people there she is. Uh, who were not like them or would die out. My thing about Just Up has been all the way the same, right, Kev? Yep. I don't know anything about what they stand for. <laughs> I don't know anything about what they're trying to. Win sort of pass over to us. All I see is a great number of unwashed middle-aged people and young people who presumably have nothing better to do than block our roads. I was walking. When Vic had her last scan yeah. at the Chelsea and Westminster yeah. Hospital, I got off the tube at Ells, Ells Cook because I've worked out the tube's quite good fun. <laughs> and I walked down the road and they were there. Yeah. And they were, Jersey, come and lie down. No, I am not lying, no, down. lying down. Go and have a wash. The thing is, loads of them are middle-aged or older. You they're, don't see them in half-term because they're all in their people... villas in Mallorca. That's why. They're all trust the fairians who get on the train, <laughs> come up to London for the day before going back to their £10 million houses in the suburbs. So uh, Olive has noticed that there's a big problem. Everyone in Just Stop Oil is white, middle-aged and middle class. Olive has branched uh, out. Well, Olive has branched out into the wonderful world of reality. Yep. Welcome to planet Earth. Yep. That is the case, Olive. You are on the ball. We always knew it. Only Just Stop Oil are just waking up to the fact they're too white too middle class and too middle aged. It's just pathetic. Get a wash, get a job and get out of our hair. Thank you very uh, much. Indeed. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, the tax uh, people. <laughs> uh, the tax man runneth. Uh, last week we found out uh, that uh, they were changing their mind about closing down. Oh yeah, they were going to not answer the phones for six months, six although months. they want your money, then they backtrack, right? Yeah, yeah, they changed their minds about that under pressure. So they're going to keep their helpline over. But it turns out when they were making this decision, yes. let's save money by uh, closing down on our helpline, <laughs> shall we? Uh, well, actu actually, uh, they just spent uh, £852,000 on comfy furniture. That's why they And an it. HMRC, ladies and gentlemen, spokesman said the contract to provide staff with the desks and chairs they need to work at was decided through an open competition <gasps> to get the best deal for you, the British <sighs> taxpayer. We're halting the helpline changes as we recognise more needs to be done to ensure all taxpayers' needs are met, whilst also encouraging them to move to online services. What a load of old tosh. Have you lot ever been had? Because we are being taken for a ride here by the. Do you know they have desks now, by the way? We haven't got much time. They have desks that people stand up. 
There was a big office meeting the other day, and I was I at the front, and I sat... This is Dave, my sidekick, and I sat down on this chair, missed my foot and teeter button, and it dropped three foot, and I fell on my backside. It's supposed to be everybody. good for your back, but not in your case, No, eh? not at all. Uh, Now, uh, let's do a little bit of wokery, shall we? Oh, God. Uh, a London theatre, the Soho Theatre. Do you remember that comedian the other week, uh, the anti-Semite, who chased out those poor Jewish people yes. in the audience because they wouldn't join in with his pro-Palestinian march? He's now banned, but... Uh, uh, this was the Soho Theatre. Uh, guess what? They've got a new show in uh, right. called uh, uh, the uh, Femme de Colour Comedy Club. These are sort of uh, women of colour, I think, right. doing stand-up comedy. And as the audience arrives, uh, they're all told to check their white privilege. What does that uh, mean? Well, uh, something to do with being Not privileged your because we're white and, you know, to make sure that you feel bad about yourself as you walk in because you're part what of the What was that thing? Because I haven't spoken to you about this, but wasn't there a theatre in London that did... Uh, black audience only. Yeah, what, the, what is that the yeah, same? Yeah, yeah, that was no. That's a different one. Uh, that's on St Martin's Lane. That's going to be called. I think it's called Slave. That one, uh, and that's uh, black only. Now you're getting uh, told off if you're white if you go to the Soho Theatre. So. Uh, Going to the theatre was supposed to be about entertainment. It now seems to be about moral judgment, that the people putting on the plays want to morally judge you, tell you you can't come in if you're white, uh, tell you that if you do come in and you're white, you're some sort of awful, privileged, elite person who looks down. I mean, it's a joke. I just put on a play, see if I like it. And if I don't, I'll let you know. And if I do, happy days. I don't want your moral judgment. I don't want you asking me whether or not I'm white or privileged. What on earth do you think you're doing? This is a free country. Free speech, freedom of expression. None of this retrograde uh, sort of apartheid nonsense. Well, you've had your say. Well, yeah, I'm well, just uh, thinking about privilege. I hope my driver's not gone yet. Right, but finally... I'm joking. Just before you... Shakespeare. His, <laughs> your staff are waiting outside. Shakespeare has made theatre to white male heterosexual... What does cisgender mean? Uh, well, that means born that way. So if you're a cisgender male... You're a bloke, basically. So this is a new taxpayer-funded study. Eight hundred thousand pounds. By the way, the Soho Theatre we just talked about. Yeah. That gets eight hundred thousand a year from what, the government. What from us? And so does uh, the uh, this university, which is now examining why Shakespeare allegedly has made theatre too white too male, too heterosexual, and uh, too cisgender. I'm sure Shakespeare, the bard back in the 16th century, was sitting around thinking, now I must make sure that this uh, Romeo and Juliet you know is too cisgender. Do you know when he died? Do you know when he died? 15 something or other. 1547. Yeah. Do you want to hear my joke? Go on then. William Shakespeare, 1547, lead in his pencil. William Shakespeare, 1548, lead in his coffin. There you go. Well, that it's is all perfect. I could possibly say. That's perfect. That's why he gets the big bucks. He certainly gets more. It's than not me. about money. Thank you. Uh, it's good to have Jeremy Kyle on board always. Excellent. Thanks, mate. Sadly, though, we've come to the end of this show. Thank you uh, for tuning in. Please do join uh, me and Alex hopefully later on Cross Talk at one p.m. But stand by, ladies and gentlemen, because she is the doyen of talk. The legend that is Julia Hartley Brewer isn't here. Peter Carwell. Next. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to abbon and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. A trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out.
They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <Whirl, listen. laughs> There was a suggestion by some.